Hey guys, welcome to this video. Um, we're doing another hot, uh, Catsman video. At this time, we're going to look at Hotspot and using User Manager. So, this is my setup. Uh, I've previously done one using Hotspot and a, a Radius server, a um, free Radius on a Linux machine, which I had connected just off the uh, this cloud here, which was actually my dev network. Uh, this time, we're going to use the same setup I've done in previous videos. Uh, check this link out here, which will go through the whole setup. Uh, but effectively we've got a hex which is running our as our router and our catspan controller we've got a cisco switch in the middle which is basically just trunking the vlans across and then we've got our two access points which are all um, talking on trunked um tagged vlan sorry uh for 10 for management 20 for our corporate ssid and 30 for our guest now our guest is what we're going to enable that hotspot on um currently this one's a psk only um so this one's just going to be using the hotspot feature and then we'll after we've enabled that we'll set up the user man to manage the users and i'll show you some customization you can do with that as well um so let's get going so i've already enabled the package by default this isn't here but to do that we simply just go to uh system uh packages and then we if that wasn't there as it is at the moment we go to check for updates uh, and then we go check updates and that's going to tell us as a newer version of router os but also we want to know as you can see in the background it's loaded all these um uninstalled packages so as well as the the, the basic um router software we've also got these additional ones we can add in so user manager would have been uh, grayed out so all we do is we tick it we click uh, enable which then it will say scheduled for install and then we do hit apply changes don't just reboot it you have to actually hit the supply changes for this to uh, take effect the other way of doing it is go into microsoft's website into the download section and then find your um, architecture which we're using uh this one i believe you can always check that by what's in brackets here and then you just get the extra packages for the version that you're on um check out uh, a link as well i put uh, just here and that will show you uh basically about upgrading downgrading router os and um if your version isn't listed here so but anyway so that you would just drag and drop that here then you can just reboot it and it will apply it just make sure you're matching firmware versions so once that's enabled and you've rebooted and it's listed there you will have this user manager option here so but before we look into doing that we're going to set up our hotspot first of all as i mentioned wi-fi and everything's already up and running i've got the two ssids for my corporate so two and five gig i've separated those my guess then is going to be um, the same across all. I've got two access points. We each have a different, have one has a 2.4, one has a 5 gig card, which is why we've um, effectively got uh, four SSIDs coming off one access point. Okay, but we, yeah, we've gone through all that. That's what he set up. If you need uh, help on that, check that initial link I showed you. Um, we won't go into too much of the VLAN and, VLANing and everything else, but just to say that the the network that we're going to be assigning the Catsman to is going to be this VLAN 30, which is my guest. Okay, so hotspot. We go to IP hotspot. Providing you've already created your uh, interface with the IP address, we can then hit this hotspot setup. We select that here. Like I mentioned, it's VLAN 30 guest. We go next, and then it's going to pre-populate all of that st stuff for us. Create us our DHCP and all the rest of it. Certificate I'm using, I've already installed an SSL cert. Um, again, check this link out up here for uh, uh, a guide to how to do this part. Basically, what we're doing is using the free uh, Let's Encrypt SSL using the, the DNS uh, option, the IP cloud for Microtik. And that's going to be our host name that we're going to use for our login page. It means that we can have an SSL cert on there. Okay, and we can just click next on most of this DNS name. This is just a test user we can create at the beginning. There we go. There we go. So it creates our servers, server profiles, and our users. That one user, sorry, that we created. Now we can go ahead and create a user in here. We can connect to that. And our hotspot's pretty much up and running already. We don't need to add do any more than that if we don't want to, if we want to just add our users in here. And, and in the, the basic setup guide that I went through, that's what we did. And then the next guide I did, we did uh, using Radius to authenticate our users. Um, we're going to do exactly the same principle, except instead of our Radius server being on a separate device, and it still could, could still be on a separate device, but that device could be a Microtik, 
we can then run our radio server within Microtik. And that's all this is really. We're using the same ports and protocols pretty much. So first thing we do is we're going to go ahead and enable our user manager. Now, first thing is open it up and click on settings. And we want to just enable that there. Okay. And okay that. Now we want to add a, a router. So this is basically what's going to be making the radius requests. As we did with the free radius, you, there's a NAS table where you um, put your IP address of the router that's going to make the requests for radius. But because we're on the same device, we can just put our uh, local um, IP address in there. And then we just do a shared secret. Now this can be anything you like. I'm just going to use Hello World 123 because it's just easy, but you would use something a bit more secure. You can leave this port as default, and this is what's going to be used to do some of the um, radius to have control to the authenticate and things like that. But that you, if you don't want to change that, you don't need to. Okay. And we can create a test user. User one, we'll just call, give that a password nice and simple. Okay. And all the rest is default. So now that's one half of it. Now we've got our radius server running. We need to then tell the micro tickets to actually use the. Um, connect to itself basically we hit this incoming button and accept as you can see there's that port i mentioned that coa port there that just has to match okay and then we add a server and this is going to be as we did for our, our free radius setup this would be telling our microsic how to get to the uh, radius server so we want to use it for hotspot the address for us is going to be local so as i mentioned if you were using a separate micro ticket for this it would be that address that it's reachable on and there's the secret that we just put in before. So this bit has to match whatever we set in this bit. Okay. And that's done. So now our wrap micro can talk to this to do its radius request. Now we just need to tell hotspot to use radius. And that we do in the server profiles that we created here. As you can see, general login and then radius. We just tick the radius box but a button. Okay that and then we're good to go. So let's try that out. Connect to guest. Okay, open up our splash page. Okay, let's just use that test user. Uh, password, What's password. Yeah, logged in. Okay. Come back on my mic check active there we go active so as you can see we're using the users now i've added on here and that all works pretty well so the next thing we can do is look at how we can um send some attributes back like we did with the other radius setup we did that rad rad reply option in the table where we basically send um parameters back to the microtech so within a uh, hotspot we can have these user profiles uh we'll just create a generic one um, and in here we can do various things. We can uh, apply filters, mark the packets, but we can assign these queues. So I'm just going to go for default small for our queue type. Okay, and then here you can set the speed within the profile. But we're going to do this via the, the radius. So what we want to do is we want the radius to tell us um, to assign that profile. So we're going to do this with user groups back in. So we're now in user manager. And what we're going to do is just copy this default one. Okay, and close that. And we'll call this uh, we'll call this group uh, group one, for want of a better word. Now we've got all these attributes here. Now these are, if you go to, I'll give you the link in the description. But basically, this is going to this radius client tells us all the different attributes we can use and what they're for. So you can basically pick the one you want. We're going to do the ones we're going to use today are going to be the um, the Microsoft group, which is going to be the name of the profile that we want to set, and this rate limit, which is, determines the the speed the client's going to get. So we're going to use the group to define the group. So we go to Microsoft group. Now, if you were doing this on the radius one, you'd have to copy this attribute, whereas we've handily got all of them in here. So that was the uh, best way to make sure we don't make any mistakes as well. Is just to copy that name because it is a string and it has to match okay so now when our oh sorry not yet we just need to tell our user sorry to use that uh, group okay so when we assign a new user 
if it's in that group, it's going to get assigned uh, this group on there. Which we could also, if we had our users set up here, we could put that profile in there. But we're going to not configure anything in our hotspot. Okay, so now that's done. We haven't actually specified any speed. So what we could do is we could specify the speed in here as another attribute. Okay, as a the uh, microtick rate limit. But let's go ahead and do it on the client itself, just for a bit of variety. So back on the user manager. Here we also have that same attribute options. So we could do everything in here. We could, you know, once you've, there's general settings you want to apply to certain users, you can do it in there. So you basically just however you want to customize it. But if you said to this user, you can have say five make, for example, and everyone else is getting two and it's quite low, but I picked five because the connection that I'm on only has a seven meg or so upload. So just to kind of give you, uh, otherwise it wouldn't, if I gave it 10, it would never reach 10. So, um, so there's a rate limit set there. Okay. So now what we go ahead and do, I'm going to disconnect from here and just to make sure everything I get the splash page and everything back again. I'm just going to make sure I've removed all everything from here. No longer active and then clear any cookies. Okay. So now let's go ahead and connect again. Okay. So user one and then a password. Connect, you are logged in. Okay, now let's do a speed test. There we go. Limited to five meg down. And while that's doing that, if I open up queues, you'll see there's a dynamic queue being added in here under simple queues, which says five and five for my IP. See, it's gone red because I'm maxing it out. It's gone yellow. And we should be doing the upload soon. Yep, let's get in there. As I mentioned, upload's a bit more limited on this connection. So if I do that again, I should get a better one. The, um, as you notice, I set five meg under um, the attribute here. If you specify up and down, we jump back onto here. There you go, it tells you that um, the format is received and um, sent, transferred and received, but received isn't received to the client, it's received to the microtech space. So this is upload and this is download. So you would do, that's five and five, which means you get both. And if you wanted five upload and say 10 download, you would just basically do that. Make sure you have the M in there as well, because it's the unit is bits. So that would be five bits. So that the large M makes it megabits and then G would be gigabits, but we're talking Wi-Fi, so be very surprised if you're getting anything near a gig on Wi-Fi. So take that. Well, speed's still a little bit low, but um, that's more to do with my connection, I think, than anything else. But yeah, basically uploading, I should have 20 meg on this connection. So um, yeah, that's limited there. So yeah, we can adjust clients either by themselves or we can do it via that profile. Okay, so hopefully that's clear enough. Uh, I'll put links to all those stuff, all those bits below. Um, and I'll try and put together a guide as well and link that in the description as well on my website just for a bit of ease of following. But um, there's lots more you can do. There's uh, lots more on Hotspot that we can customize. I did the When I did the video on Hotspot, my file list was empty. So these are all the files I basically use, the login screens and everything else. So I'll perhaps do another video um, fairly soon where we're actually going to customize a lot of this um, so you can put your own spin on it um different ways we can generate users and things like that so being microtech it's you know everything's scriptable we can integrate this with other um you know if you have like a uh it's in a hotel for example where you've got a guest login system you can integrate it with that maybe um you know it's at the end of the day it's linux based it's got apis you can do so much with it after all, it is your Swiss Army knife of networking equipment. So yeah, and this all could run on a single, as we got it running here on a single device, you didn't have to use the Catsman. This could be a single, say a, a HAP AX that you could have sat in your cafe if it's only a small room or your office at home or small office. Um, and then everything could be all in one box. You can have your Wi-Fi, your routing, your um, hotspot for your guest users and your um, user management all in the one device. So you're only limited by your 
the hardware basically with Microtik everything is in the in terms of um, software you don't have to worry about different licenses for different um, features which is another tick in the box but anyway hopefully that's clear enough if you've got any questions any thoughts please uh, link them below in the just uh, comments uh, always happy to help if you've got any need for videos I do get a lot of requests um, you know the more popular my videos get the more requests I get and comments um, so apologies if I've not replied to you I do try to get through them all as quickly but at the same time I've got you know lots of videos I'm trying to make and get through as well so um, yeah I will get to you at some point but yeah, you can always contact me via email as well if you have any um, any any queries or help with anything and also as I mentioned in my last video I've got that membership option now so I'll start to populate some dedicated videos on there and once I start to get a few members we can um, look to uh, doing some live streaming sessions so that'll be fun but anyway thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one cheers